I have a message that I've titled, Will Trump Fulfill the Prophecies from the 1800s? What am I talking about? After the Civil War, there was a group of people. They were elders and uh, people that believed, of course, in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believed in visions and dreams that went to prayer and fasting concerning the United States. When they began to get together and began to share some of the dreams that they were having, there were about seven or eight points. I haven't counted exactly here. It may be more than that, maybe closer to nine or 10 that seemed to be a common theme. Now in 2010 in Griffin, Georgia, I shared this information. It actually came from a book and I apologize for not being able to give you the title because I packed this book up in probably 2011 and I have literally 60 to 80 boxes of books packed up in a warehouse and could not tell you what box that book is in. But I do know that the individual who wrote it had been a journalist with the New York Times and he had researched all of this. And I just really uh, was fascinated by it. And now for the first time, it appears it could be coming to pass. And I believe it's possible And the reason I say possible is because unless I hear from the spirit of the Lord, when I hear from him, I make it definite. But when I just get information, I leave it in the realm of possibilities that that President Trump and I still call him President Trump, not former president. I still call him President Trump may fulfill what I'm about to tell you. Now, what I'm going to do is share with you the visions and dreams that occurred with this group of people after the Civil War. And remember Uh, These were written down in the 1800s. This is not something someone just came up with. These are well, well over, uh, well over a hundred and, oh my goodness, I'd have to go back and add up the years, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 130 years of age, total, or 130 years old. First, there will be internal fighting among families as predicted by Christ in the New Testament. Well, the political division, if nothing else, is causing that. There will not be uh, one big war, but there will be fighting that will spread to the states, cities, and neighborhoods throughout America. Now, we've already seen that with protesters, especially on the West Coast, and uh, I think it was Minnesota and all these, Wisconsin, all these other places. Number three, this is what one of the elders said. I've seen the end of this nation, and it is terrible. A secret band will sap the life out of this nation, a secret ban, which that word ban there means group. We would call it today, I think, the deep state. Manufacturing will cease for a time. Even farmers will allow their land to remain fallow. Now, whether you believe this or not, you can research where some farmers didn't even farm because they didn't have the money to do it because of the debts they owed either on their equipment. So they just let the land. Now, not a lot at this point, but there were some. The sea will heave itself beyond its bounds engulfing cities, earthquakes, hail, and rain will bring destruction. We've, we have, we have, we've seen that already. And I think the, the sea uh, heaving itself may act, actually allude to some future tsunamis, which is something that I've actually seen in dreams and visions. It's very troubling when you experience something like that. Mobs will roam the cities looking for money and food and destroying anyone who opposed them. Now, we've not seen them looking for money and food, but we have seen mobs roaming the cities, burning the businesses and the cars and causing chaos. Now, this one is very interesting. The Indians, and they were not talking here about the Native Americans. They actually were talking about the Hispanic community in the South will raise up and challenge the American people. And that is that has been done with what we call the illegal immigration Uh, with illegal immigrants and things of that nature. And I won't elaborate on that. I think those of you who, you know, watch the news and keep up with things can see it. The next one is, this is, this is it right here. Listen carefully. The government will abuse the constitution, go in severe debt, cause, and they will actually eventually flee because of safety concerns. Now you've seen them confront people over the past several years in restaurants, go to their home and protest. And now it's being reversed where these people who are considered to be some considered to be traitors or whatever are being confronted in airports and things like that. 
Internal fighting will cause the collapse of the federal and state governments. Now listen to that last one. Internal fighting will cause the collapse of federal and state governments. Now, we do know that historically democracies do not last forever. And it has been a predicted for quite some time that the democracy in America would not last forever. And I'm not either saying it will or it won't. That's not what I'm here to share with you. I want to share with you these visions and dreams. Now, all of this, again, was in the 1800s, post-Civil War, after the Civil War. All right. Now, here was one of them that I've got to tell you about that I think may be connected to President Trump. They predicted that the Constitution would be trampled under, which it has been and will be in the future. There will be a group of people raised up in the United States forming a organization or a group. It's a major group to restore the Constitution and demand a new government be elected. Woo-hoo. The 1800s. This word was given. Now, again, these were visions and dreams that people were having. And I want to say it again. A new group of people will restore the Constitution, raise up to restore the Constitution and demand a new. Now, the the restoring of the Constitution, I can understand that because groups like the Tea Party were pro-constitutional. But that last part of demanding a new government, that the government was so corrupt, they said, we demand a new government. And it has to be it would have to be in the tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of people before that would happen. It has been reported that President Trump is possibly going to form a new political party, a pro-Constitution party. And I don't think he knows anything about this or anything about these predictions. I wish somebody would share that with him. And uh, this this new political party that would raise up the United States would be pro-Constitution. Now, the thing that's happening now, and I'm, I'm saying this from someone who is 61 years of age, been ministering for 40, almost 46 years, uh, who lived, whose, whose family, my dad pastored outside of Washington, D.C. for many years. Um, I believe that this division that you see is very clear, pro-Constitution, pro-freedom, pro-faith, versus atheism, Marxism, communism, silencing people. And and it happened in Germany. It happened in Russia. And the people, uh, of course, the the Russian Revolution was different because the Bolshevik Bolshevik Revolution was the common people raising up, but it led to communism, which sounded good at the time, but was terribly detrimental. The um, fascism that came through Hitler is, uh, is more what we're seeing with shutting down the radio, shutting down the bank account, shutting people out of their jobs, firing them because of their, their different ideas and beliefs. That's, hap- that's happening all over. And if these groups, Christians who love the word and know the word, conservatives, Christians, and patriots, and there are a lot, especially in the South, South, uh, Midwest, <laughs> Midwest, I don't want to say too much about that. I know a good bit about some of those uh, homies in the Midwest. But in, in, in the South uh, as well, in the Southeast, there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood, in my estimate, of 40 states that I think are pro-Constitution and 10 states that just have large cities that people pay no attention because they don't think that what is happening is going to impact them. Where the cities will be impacted will be with natural disasters. Now, listen to me. Mark this down. You'll you'll come back to this maybe if this video is up in years from now, months. I don't know. You'll come back to this. But there will be cities that will come under natural disasters. And there are going to be cities that if they keep passing the laws they're getting ready to pass. I mean, they they, um, Biden has signed in. Uh, shutting down the Keystone, which lost 10,000 jobs. And if he goes to the $15 an hour minimum wage, which sounds great, it, you lose uh, 3.7 to about 7 million jobs from small businesses, restaurants, uh, fast food chains that cannot afford, you know, your hamburger, instead of being a hamburger uh, fries and a, a, a drink for $5, is going to go up to $10 at McDonald's. 
you can't, you can't survive that. You cannot make it. Small businesses cannot make it, especially if you're paying insurance. So I understand it. And those who are ec economists have warned this could be, sounds great. I think it would be great if everybody could get that. Yeah, I really do. But from a practical perspective, when you are paying bills, insurance salaries plus the bills to own a business, it doesn't, it just doesn't pan out. So President Trump may be fulfilling these predictions from the post-Civil War of the 1800s by forming a new political party. Now, I'll be honest, it, it, it frightens um, the party that he's connected with right now. But at the same time, uh, it gives you a leverage in the future uh, to say our group of, let me just use a fictitious number, 25 to 30 to 50 million people who are a part of my organization do not believe in what you're about to do. It will affect the people. So we're not voting for you. Then, it, then that's, how, that's how the other side puts pressure on their people. You know, someone was uh, sharing with me the other day that the Keystone Pipeline was on Obama's desk for a long time, and he actually thought it would be a good idea for America, but he wouldn't sign it because pressure came from the party that he's connected to. So anyway, we will see in time to come but the reason I think that this part that talks about the state and federal governments collapsing with internal fighting and the abuse of the Constitution, um, the uh, communities in the South raising up, and that would be at the border, because we can see it coming or we're seeing in early stages. So why wouldn't the rest of this come to pass as well? So there you have it. Time will tell. But I wanted to share this with you. I think it's very interesting and very intriguing and someone says, well, how do we know when someone has given us a dream or a vision that it's from the Lord? And the answer is, if it comes to pass. And sometimes visions and dreams uh, are timed and uh, people give a date. And when it doesn't happen, you just have to admit they missed it or they have to admit they missed it. But at times when there's not a time element, then um, it could be, you know, if this were in the 1800s, it could be far off into the future. So the Bible says we don't despise prophecy, but we have to judge it. And I don't want to get into the, the rules and the laws of judging prophetic words. That's another, another day, another time. But thank you for joining me. I would suggest to you at the end of every telecast, there will be a special announcement of a resource that we're beginning to put up on our program. So please take the time to watch it because I may have something that you would be very interested in. And it helps support um, our global ministry. Our ministry is not just in America. It's all, all the way around the world. And of course, we need the, the, the Christians and those who believe our message, you know, even our, the American patriots and all of our good friends up, up in the, my homies from up in the mountain. And I use that term, uh, you know, in, in respect toward, I, I consider them family, to uh, continue to pray for us, of course, primarily. And uh, when you can help us to continue to do what we're doing. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Now available, Perry Stone's latest prophetic package. Discover America's future concealed in historical and biblical patterns in Perry's landmark book, The Final Ciphers and the Return of Christ. Perry has explored and tapped into important revelation and understanding, detailing 20 ciphers, including stunning prophetic cycles and patterns based on ancient and end time prophecies in scripture. Some of the chapters include Unlocking and Understanding God's Cipher System, the prophetic ciphers of two cities, the China link, the virus cycles echoing ancient ciphers of the Roman Empire, the cipher of the third trimester, birth pains, America's ciphers parallel with ancient history, ciphers from the Roman Empire, America's death of conscience and conviction, the Pompeii cipher and the forbidden J word, the cipher of the breach when America's hedge was cracked, the future cipher of the image of the beast, Revelation 13, Unlocking the Cipher of the Mark of the Beast, Revelation 13. Interpreting the Cipher of Strange Cosmic Signs. The Money Cipher, the clue before empires decline. Perry also answers the question, who can escape what is coming on the earth? And he will give a warning cipher from the Holy Spirit for the church. Included with the book is the two audio CD teaching, Preparing and Surviving During Hard Times. Is it time to leave big cities? And what are the steps to prepare for coming disasters and future trouble? 
Perry's latest prophetic package, which includes the book, The Final Ciphers and the Return of Christ, along with the two audio CD teaching series, Preparing and Surviving During Hard Times, are now available for a donation of just $35 or more. Visit perrystone.org or call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. You may also write us at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number FC138. We look forward to hearing from you soon.